the familiar sights, landmarks and skyline of Singapore, the city-state on the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula. We're at the Singapore Indoor Stadium, part of the magnificent Singapore Sports Hub for quarterfinals day at the OUE Singapore Open, one of the 12 tournaments that span the globe to form the MetLife BWF World Super Series, the elite tier of tournament in the sport of badminton. This is the 28th staging of the Singapore Open and it's been an ever-present tournament on the Super Series Tour ever since the inception of the Super Series 10 years ago. So the 12 tournaments plus the end of year season finale and the destination once again is Dubai. The Super Series Finals is staged in Dubai and is just the top eight players and pairs in each of the five disciplines who will qualify for the end of season championships. So the fans here very much looking forward to the five matches we've got for you this evening. We're starting with women's doubles and it's the World Championship bronze medalists against the World Championship silver medalists. Fukuman and Yonao up against Camilla Rutiul and Christina Pedersen who also won silver at last year's Olympic Games. Then it's a men's doubles and a pair that's been unstoppable so far this year. Marcus Fernaldi, Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya, Sukdamolio, winners of all three Super Series tournaments so far far this year they're up against Li Jiafei and Li Yang of Chinese Taipei. Then it's big doubles in the 2016 All England Champions Praveen Jordan and Debbie Susanto up against Puavara Nukro and Teorat Tanachai trying to become uh, reach their first semi-final at Super Series level. Then it's women's singles and it's a repeat of the Olympic final. The silver medalist Pusala Venkata Sindhu up against the gold medalist Carolina Marin, who is also two-time world champion. Then we finish with the second men's doubles. The beaten finalists from last year, Kamora and Sonoda, up against a pair that actually reached the final here 12 years ago. Bo and Mogensen from Denmark. Well, with the first of our matches uh, being women's doubles, a uh, chance for us to look at the women's doubles draw from quarter-final stage. Only five different nations, so seven seeds through to the quarter-finals. Two Japanese pairs, two Korean pairs, and two pairs from Thailand. And as you can see, the All England champions, Jang Ye Na and Lee So Hee, the number four seeds already safely through to the semi-final. We're about to find out who they will play tomorrow because we're concentrating on that bottom section of the draw. So the now, let's welcome our fans here in court. Singapore, very knowledgeable about their badminton. And they will know that these are two of the finest pairs in world of badminton and two pairs that have already enjoyed considerable success so far this year. Fukuman and Yonao reached the final of the India Super Series. And of course, the tall Danes, Pedersen and Rutiul, will reach the final of the All England Super Series event. So two pairs who have each been in a Super Series tournament final this year. The introduction with the court officials and you can really see the height difference can't you between the two pairs so it is the number two seeds Christina Pedersen and Camilla Rutiu against the number six seeds Nako Fukuman and Kurumi Yonao for the Japanese pair and this is a second consecutive quarter final here they were quarter finalists last year and as I was saying a moment ago, the Danes reached the final here in 2014, three years ago. And in fact, for the Danes, this is their first appearance here at the Singapore Open since they lost that final in 2014. So as far as the Japanese pair is concerned, Naoko Fukuman 
turned 25 last month from the port city of Osaka. And she and her partner currently enjoying their 11th week in total as world number sevens. That their career high. They're actually gone down three places on the Super Series standings, gone down to number six, having lost in the second round last week in Malaysia. Kurumi Yonao is 24 years of age, and I have uh, different places of birth for both of these players because I have down that she was born in Aichi Prefecture, uh, which is in central Hongshu. Uh, they, this year, as I was saying, have been in one tournament final. Uh, that was in India. And as far as their matches so far are concerned, well, they've played against two pairs from Hong Kong, and both of them, as you can see, Ready in two play. straight games. Very comfortable in both. So to their opponents, and the left-hander, the tall Camilla Rotteyul, and she really is very tall. She's 183, which is about six foot, uh, born in Skagen, which is right in the north of North Jutland. At their career high at the moment, this is their fifth different spell at number two in the world, and they're enjoying their 72nd week at that career high. Christina Pedersen will turn 31 next month, born in Aalborg. And this is only their third appearance here at the Singapore Open. Well, their opponents played against two pairs from Hong Kong. The Danes have played against two pairs from China, including the qualifiers, Bao Yi Sin and Yu Xiao Hang. Bao Yi Sin, two-time former champion here at the Singapore Open. Quite remarkable that she has to qualify for this event as we look at our court officials for this one. Incidentally, their first round of opponents, Wang Dongping and Lu Yinghui, were beaten finalists at the China Super Series last year. So two very, very good Chinese pairs that the Danes have beaten so far in this tournament. Christina Pedersen, Denmark. Christina Pedersen to serve to Naoko Fukuman. Love ball. Play. So it is the Olympic silver medalists and world championship silver medalists from Jakarta in 2015. That's well in my goodness me. That's One, a bad misjudgment. There is a huge amount of drift in this lovely arena. I'll explain more of that a little later. Yeah, it's a good Four, smash from two. Pedersen. Channel attack down the center of the court. Oh. 
Oh, goodness me, that was close. And in fact, we've got a challenge already. First Good challenge here Four, from the Danes. Oh. Now they thought that came back in. Hawkeye will tell us. No, it was clearly out. So one of their two one challenges in this opening remaining. game has gone. That's a very, very powerful smash. Good accuracy, too. And towards the left hip. Yeah, that's precisely where it was. Oh, yes. Well, this, I can tell you, is the seventh meeting between these two pairs, and of the previous six, the Danes have won five of them. Last time they met was in the quarterfinal of the All England last month. Two straight games to the Danes, 21-12, 21-11 in 42 minutes. This is four straight points from four all. been going wide. It's a good rally. It's a very good rally. Oh, yes, the interception in the end. Over. From the left-handed Oruti York. Both the Danes exceptionally good mixed doubles players as well. And, of course, Oruti Yul is a former world champion in mixed doubles. 2009 in Hyderabad with Thomas <laughs> Leiborn. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Christina Pedersen. Yeah, it was a long rally, wasn't it? 58. There's been an Olympic bronze medalist in mixed doubles with Joachim Fischer. And they're still going in the mixed doubles here. It is the Danes who are taking Ten, all the initiative, five. dictating the pace, hitting in a downward direction. Oh. 
Yeah. yeah that's the first time that they've really tried to take command of the front of the court, the Japanese combination. goes long Interval. and the Danes go to the mid-game interval with a five-point advantage oh. just seven minutes into the match oh. talk seems to be directed towards Nauko Fukuman. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Kai Nakajima, their coach. Of course, Japanese pairs have won the last two Super Series tournaments in India and last week in Malaysia. So it's possible that Japan could have three different Japanese pairs winning Play. three consecutive Super Series tournaments. Now, oh. yeah, left. yeah, you just can't control it hitting towards that far end. Well. Going well, well long. Now, China have actually twice had five different women's doubles combinations win five consecutive Super Series tournaments, but it's no other nation has achieved that apart from in men's doubles. Korea achieved it in 2012 with Kim and Kim winning Japan, Shin Bek Chol and Yu Young Sung winning Denmark, and Go Sun Hyung and Lee Yong Dae winning the French. So it is possible if one of the Japanese pairs, the two Japanese pairs, still left in the tournament, and obviously the pair we're looking at is one of them. The Olympic champions are the other. If they were to win, history would be rewritten. She's getting instruction as well from the coach. Oh. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? So difficult to control. There's so many matches so far this week have gone the full distance, gone to three games because of the the drift and the difficulties of playing from one end of the court. Oh, yes, that's clever. Nice shot from Yo now. Blocking across court into the open space. That's clever. I like that.
a sideways drift too. Opportunity from Yo now. Landed in. Yeah. Pedersen knew it as soon as it was landing. It was just inside the line. the Japanese players have excellent defences and are quite happy to defend throughout a rally, they appear to me to be really struggling with the fast exchanges. And that's a little bit surprising to me. the net court bracket goes up an apology immediately afterwards created her own luck though by driving the shuttle back taking it early So the number two seeds, just three points away from this opening game. Positive play from the Japanese pair in the early stages of this rally. Oh, that's nice too. Yeah. Well played by Fukuman and Yornau. Thank you. 
Malcolm Wides. Well, I'm, I'm pretty certain the Danish coach, Kim Nielsen, will be urging his players for the start of the second game not to get too embroiled in these flat, fast exchanges. Take a pace out of the shots occasionally. Mix up the pace, mix up the angle. Landed in. Now that is five straight points. And now only two points in it. Stamp of frustration <laughs> from Gurumi Yo now. Furious at herself for making the error. <laughs> yeah, I know how it feels. Oh, that's a good smash. Across the body of the left-hander. Service over. 17, 19. Towards uh, the left hip, which for a left-hander, very, very difficult to defend. good communication as well between the two Danes. There was a very, very definite call from Christina Pedersen that she was coming forward. She was going to take this one. And that wise decision brings up three game point opportunities. What a great serve. as if she changed her mind. Nine, and having looked very, seven, very comfortable at 18-11, now there's just one point in it. Eight of the last ten points. For the opening game to the Danish combination. 21-19. Pedersen, 21-19 in 22 minutes. And the number two seeds from Denmark looking good at the moment. I should think Kai Nakajima was fairly happy with the way that they came back in that opening game, but they just left it too late, the number six seeds from Japan. This young lady actually played in the Youth Olympics here in this very arena back in 2010. It was the number two seed in the women's singles. She won a bronze medal at the World Junior Championships in Guadalajara that same year. The World Junior Championships and the silver medalist was 
Matsutomo. Matsutomo, of course, now the Olympic women's doubles champion. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. And game, love ball, play. Oh, that's going well wide. It's over. Two, three. That's a good flip serve. Committed as she goes forward. Camilla Rutil, 33 year old. Launching herself towards the net there to make the kill. And it was worth the effort. That's a well-worked rally by the Danes. Yeah, that's 
as well left. The right to left drift as we look down on the courts, taking that wide. Frustration there from Christina Pedersen. Oh. Well, it's called out, no challenge from the Danes. Camilla Ruti Hill doing a lot of that last week. Hitting straight from the back of the court, smashing straight, and then following forward. And it's like a sides attack. And it's a lovely change of pace. One more shot of the rally. smash from Peterson. Sutton going for a cross court, a cute angle. Clever and brave. No service fault called. Racket not pointing in a downward direction, Seven, says eight. our service judge. the change of pace again. Nine, yeah, that's what I was alluding to in the opening game. And I thought their coach would be advising them of such tactics. It's 
stayed in. It stayed in. My goodness me. Ben. Or should Seven. I say it came back in. Yeah, drift helping them down that line there, the Danes. to the mid-game interval with a four-point advantage. <laughs> 34 minutes into the match. He's saying something about one, steeper seconds. angle one, of shot. Or perhaps watch out for your opponent's steeper angle of shot. Move your bases forward. Certainly by the gestures of Kai Nakajima. Suggest some sort of verbalization. another smash across the body and once again having the desired effect oh my goodness well, you don't often see her sit at a service error well, that's possibly the first service error of the match She missed that. 13, Went under five. the net from Fukuman. Yeah, she was right to try and intercept. A yeah, woefully short lift by the Danes. change of pace Fourteen, I think nine. an awful lot has been directed towards Fukuman as far as the attacking play from the Danes is concerned
as far as the Japanese pair is concerned, they simply cannot afford to just defend and defend. It is quite clear that the Danes, with their superior power and superior height, are able to penetrate the defence too often. So as far as the Japanese pair are concerned, they need to take the attack away from their opponents and the only way to really do that is to get on the attack first yourself players now what is the problem with you now awfully slow to return to court from the Japanese pair. Yeah, well, after there's the drift again. Right to left, taking it out. Two consecutive they've left that's gone long on of the back line. again straight from you and follows forward and towards the right hip and she's gone forward sides attack that's a really exciting development in women's doubles What an interception. Magnificent from Pedersen. And 10 opportunities to reach a third semi final of the year. this time.
short. This time, second time of asking. And the number two seeds, Camilla Rutiul and Christina Ferdison through to the semi-final. 21-19, 21-11, 44 minutes for the two-game victory. And they'll be mighty happy with that. Match won by Camilla Ritteriul, Christina Pedersen, 21-19, 21-11. That's the final rally. celebrations yeah very very happy with that two game victory and so there should be yeah happy as they leave the court and tomorrow it will be a repeat of the All England final uh, because they meet the All England champions, Zhang Yena and Lee So He, in tomorrow's semi final. So that's the first of our quarterfinals uh, completed in two straight games for the Olympic silver medalists. Next up is men's doubles and a pair which have really, really dominated. Won all three Super Series tournaments so far this year. Marcus Fernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukhamolio up against Li Jiuhui and Li Yang. Then it's mixed doubles and Jordan and Susanto up against Puovana Lucro and Teirat Tanachai, who are trying to reach a first ever Super Series semi final. Then it's the women's singles and a repeat of the Olympic final, a quarter final stage. That's extraordinary. And then we finish with a second men's doubles. Kamora and Sonoda have beaten finalists last year, and it was their first ever Super Series final here last year for that Japanese combination up against the World uh, Championship silver medalist, Bo and Morganson, World Championship silver medalist from 2013, of course. As far as the men's doubles draw is concerned, well, we lost one seeded pair before the tournament began. That was the number six seeds, 
Chai Biao and Hong Wei. So six of the seven seeds that started made it through to the quarterfinal stage. Six different nations, three Indonesian pairs. And look at that, one of the Indonesian pairs, unseeded Berian Griawan and Hadianto have beaten the former world number ones and Olympic silver medalist Govi Shem and Tan Wei Kiong, the number two seeds from Malaysia. Now let's welcome our players, Marcus Benaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Supamojo, Indonesia, versus Li Jiehui and Li Yang, Chinese Taipei. So a roar from the crowd when Marcos Fernali Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamolio were announced to the fans because not only have they